Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the all new Mafia and Gangsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here, a new one. One that I haven't done in fact for a good while. It's been about a couple of months since about January or February of this year since I last touched this series. Uh, the reason why I stopped doing these was because it seemed like YouTube kind of decided, you know what, we're going to go ahead and demonetize all of the videos associated with this stuff. And they deemed it because it was unsuitable for advertisers. So I decided to give it a break just to see if things change. And then lo and behold, going back at it, uh, looking at it, like say a couple of days back, I saw that there was all my videos and that they were all monetized yet again. So maybe YouTube changed your mind. So I decided to give this another go around, decided to dust things off and then focus on another entry here in the world of mafia and gangsters. I kind of teased this the other day with regards to this character and how he has a very close link to a famous character played by Joe Pesci in the film Goodfellas. And it has to do with this guy. You're looking at him now. He was, went by the name of Ronald Gerote, although he was actually born as Ronald Gerote. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with this relatively obscure mafioso guy, but at the same time, once you see the big picture, you'll realize just how big he was involved with Joe Pesci's character. So who was this Ronald Gerote? Well, he was someone that was born back in 1947, May 24th to be exact. Uh, very little, though, is known about his earlier childhood. It seems like it's just obscure, just practically gone. So whatever was the case, somewhere along the way, he decided to be in the world of mafia, probably as a young teen, much like uh, the movie Goodfellas and other shows and movies tend to showcase how these guys always get in at a young age. And from then on, he was just a lifelong mafioso guy. In fact, he operated out of a crew known as the Bergen Crew. And that crew, in turn, operated out of a place called the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club there in Ozone Park, Queens. In fact, you're looking at an older picture of it here. You'll notice right away who the famous person is in front of that location. It's, of course, John Gotti himself. This was his club. This was his location. So this guy was clearly operating within that that the, within the vicinity of that famous maf mafia guy, in this case, John Gotti. And then you're looking at a picture right now of that location as it looks today. Obviously, it's a completely different business give it you know give it a couple of decades and it the everything that was tied on as far as all the other illegal transactions all that is gone and said now it's just a legitimate business so kind of neat you can kind of probably walk there to this day walk outside probably go inside and realize that you'll be part of uh, or watching or witnessing uh, history, very, very important history in the world of the mafia. I talked about doing that, in fact, when I was in New York last year, about finding a map, trying to find all these locations that were involved in the world of the mafia, but uh, there was just enough, not enough time, so maybe next time, whenever I go back to New York, if I ever go back, then I'll try to do something along those lines. Those of you that are in that location, anywhere uh, that the mafia operated out whenever they had their heyday, you're lucky because you'll be able to go see all these places in person. But yes, back to this guy, Ronald Gerote. So he was someone that was very good at what he did there in uh, the Bergen crew. In fact, his primary racket was hijacking. Most of, most of those people there, in fact, that was their thing when it came to uh, uh, the Gotti crew or when it came to the crew associated with that area. Uh, Goodfellas was pretty good about showcasing that. They made a lot of money doing that way. He was also involved with bank robberies and then drug trafficking as well. He was very, very good at what he did, especially when it came to the bank robberies. In fact, I read several instances where it seemed like he was very efficient at what he did. Like he was able to do a uh, quick robbery in and out, like not have any mess, not have any fuss. No, he was there. It was gone within a couple of minutes. Uh, the people would never have known what hit them while he was doing with his crew, the bank robberies themselves. Another thing he was good at too was apparently seducing the ladies. His nickname, you know how a lot of these mafiosos always have nicknames. Well, this guy, Ronald's nickname was Foxy because of the way that he was able to seduce, uh, be a womanizer with so many women. But there he was performing all these hijackings. He always kept a small uh, snub-nosed pistol that seemed to be his uh, main thing. And he did it almost like a policeman always taping it to 
his leg. Now, where things turn, took a turn happened to do with this. You're looking at this guy, Thomas De Simone, very, very famous guy in the world of the mafia. Thomas uh, Two Gun Tommy, in other words, De Simone. He was the character that Joe Pesci played within Goodfellas. And of course, once that movie came out, it just pretty much made uh, that name uh, were known worldwide in the world of mafia. So both of them became very good friends. They did a lot of hijackings together. Uh, afterward, they would celebrate, party, get high as well. So close was their friendship that they would actually do a lot of streaking together. Apparently during that time period, it was a craze. It was something where people would go get naked and then run across the streets as high as they could uh, I mean, in other words, like, you know, high on drugs, and then they would see us, you know, try to go as far as they could as well, and then that was it, like, that was the whole craze, but they were known for doing that together, and they would also go in go-karts around several locations, too, but yes, they were friends up to a certain point, so Thomas De Simone, or Tommy, uh, in this case, I'm sorry, Two Gun Tommy, he was also a womanizer. He was also someone who loved seducing the ladies. He came across Ronald Gerote's sister and they both began dating. Everything was fine, but only up to a certain point. Eventually, uh, both of them broke up. It seemed like though it was the sister that decided to break up with Tommy. Like in the world of mafia uh, and, and everyone that knows uh, this guy, Thomas De Simone, he was a hothead. Like clearly in the movie Goodfellas, they perfectly portrayed him in terms of his craziness. Like he was someone that could turn on an instant uh, with regards to his anger. And he was someone that was brutal when it came to uh, making sure that he could do like damage to someone that he felt hurt him. So such was the case here uh, when it see when it when uh, Gerote's sister decided to break up with him. Then after that uh, happened, there was a big assault that occurred between Tommy and the sister. I mean, it was pretty bad. I didn't know the full details on it, but whatever it was, it was so bad that once this guy, Ronald Gerote, remember he was the brother, once he found out about it, all friendship was over. In fact, he decided to threaten uh, out loud, it seems, throughout multiple parts of the crew that he would murder Tommy, like this was something that it was so bad, like I totally, I could imagine that it was black eyes, bruises, just very, very bad stuff, the stuff you never want to see happen to a family member. Well, clearly in this case, Ronald Girote decided that he was going to do something about it. Now, whether he was truly going to go forward with it, that's up to debate, uh, because still, even when you're in a crew, to kill someone else, you have to have permission, and in this case, he was openly threatening Tommy De Simone, but Tommy decided to go ahead and do something about it himself. In fact, once he heard about the threat, he decided to go visit Ronald, and uh, it seemed like knocking on the door, he probably looked through the keyholes, you know, saw who it was, and then realized, you know, it's Tommy, maybe they'll settle this once and for all. He opened the door, and then as soon as he did so, Tommy punched him as hard as he could, like he punched him right between the eyes. This clearly caught this guy, Ronald Girote, back by surprise, but by then it was too little, too late. Tommy, in this case, two-gun Tommy, the reason he was called that was because he always carried guns with him. He, in turn, took out a thirty-eight pistol, and then in that brief moment, while this other guy, Ronald Girote, was was reeling backwards, he took out the gun and then shot him three times, twice in the head, in fact, just instant death at that point. So such was the life of this guy, Ronald Gerote, pretty much being a lifelong crew member of the Bergen crew, doing pretty good when it came to that because of uh, the success that he had as a hijacker, bank robbery, all that stuff, and then running into and becoming friends with Tommy De Simone. All of that led to that one point where he assaulted his sister and then because of the verbal threat that Tommy heard and because he was not going to stand for it, then he decided to take it out on this guy. Remember, there's that famous scene in Goodfellas where that other guy, Spider, just basically insulted him uh, to his face in front of the other crew. And what did he do? What did Tommy do? He decided to shoot him right then and there. Such was the case 
with this guy, Ronald Girote. But if there's any consolation is this fact, um, this murder, along with Billy Batts' infamous murder from the Goodfellas movie, those two items, because they were both not sanctioned at all by any crew members, they were all considered um, uh, basically like without permission, then that's what ended the life of Tommy DeSimone because as the movie shows, he eventually was lured into someplace else with the pretense of being of becoming a made man, but by then he was shot and then he disappeared outright. So and with regards to that, it's, it's, it's crazy like um, um, how... He thought he would get away with it, but eventually it just led to his own demise. But that's it. That's pretty much all the information associated with this guy, Ronald Girote. So what do you guys think? I mentioned earlier he was going to have a direct link to uh, to uh, Joe Pesci's famous character from Goodfellas, uh, Tommy De Simone, and sure enough, he absolutely did. Can you imagine that final moment when he opened the, the door? He only had one half of a half of a second probably to react and then that was it his life was over so but if anybody has any more info anything i might have missed please post those comments below anybody happen to be by those areas that i mentioned earlier um if, if you're there in the queens to brooklyn whatever other area there in new york uh if you, if you happen to be by those mafioso areas have a chance to see them it'd be great to hear your experience post them in the comments below so all right everybody thanks again as always take care